In this video, we're going to go through how to use a Tanabe Sagano diagram to determine the octahedral splitting energy as well as the Rocca parameter and be able to decide whether a complex is high spin or low spin based solely on the electronic absorption spectrum that we've collected. And so the example I'm going to be using is one of the examples from the practice quiz, which is this Tris Bippy cobalt 2 plus complex right here. And so this complex has two absorptions, one at 885 nanometers and another one at 455 nanometers. Now, the first step that we'll want to do is we'll want to convert these wavelengths that we have right here into energy values. Um, and so the easiest energy value that we can use is the wave number. And so to do that, all we will use is just this equation right here where we can get the wave number will be equal to 1 over the wavelength times 10 to the negative 7. Right? And so if we just simply plug in our values right here for 885 nanometers for lambda, what we will get is that that corresponds to an energy of 11,300 wave numbers. In the case of the 455 nanometer absorption, that comes in at 22,000 wave numbers. Now that we know what the energies are of the two absorptions, what we'll want to do is we'll want to determine what the ratio is between the two of them, where we flip and put the highest energy on top of the other one to get that ratio. And so if we do that, what we'll have is then 22,000 wave numbers over 11,300 wave numbers. And so if we uh, do this division, what we'll get is then a ratio of 1.95. And so this ratio right here is actually pretty important because if we look at the tanabe sagana diagram for our complex, and so in the case of this cobalt-2 complex, since it's cobalt-2, it's going to be a D7 ion, we're going to look at the D7 tanabe sagana diagram, which I have right here. And so this one is slightly different than the one that we have in the book because in this case right here, what we can see is that our x-axis, instead of being dq over b, is already as listed as delta o over b. And so the values are just multiplied by 10, and that's the only difference between the two. Everything else is exactly the same as the um, species that we have, uh, or sorry, not the species, the handout that I had given in class. And so the reason, now continuing on, um, the reason that this ratio right here is important is because it'll help us determine at what value of delta O over B the energies uh, of the two transitions are um, have a, a ratio of 1.95 from each other. Because if we look here at the left-hand side, we can see the energy over B, and since B is constant for this molecule, the ratio should be exactly the same. And so the first thing that we'll want to do is determine is this complex high spin or low spin. So high spin is everything to the left of this split right here, low spin is everything to the right. And so if we look at these two spectra, what we can see is that the ground state in the high spin case is this 4T1G, and in the case of the low spin it's 2T2G. So for the low spin case, all transitions are going to have to have a spin of 4. And so we're going to have a, a, a term of 4 right here with our species. And so if we look at the different transitions, so for the one that I'm using right here, it shows you already the ones that are going to be um, spin allowed. And that will be um, this one right here, which if we follow it all the way through is the 4T2G state. If we then look at the next one, what we can see is that this is the 4T1G, and this one right here that has a slope of about uh, 2 is the 4A2G. Now, if you're thinking, well, okay, if I look at 1.95, there's a good chance that I can have that transition right here. You have to think about it with some chemical intuition. The chances that you're going to have a double uh, excited, uh, dub or sorry, doubly uh, uh, excited species where you have two electrons promoted is going to be a lot less likely than if you have 
two uh, uh, um, one electron excitations that happen. And so the two transitions that we're going to focus on is this lower energy transition right here, where we're going from the 4T1G to the 4T2G, and then also from the 4T1G to this 4T1G that originates from the 4P. And so those are going to be the two transitions. That's how we're going to assign the 885 as the 4T1G to 4T2G, and the 455 to the 4T1G to the 4T1G originating from 4P. Well, that will allow us to establish that this is a high spin case if this is the correct one. What we want to do first, though, and so, spoiler, uh, it is going to be the high spin case because if we look at the low spin case right here where we originate at the 2T2G, there's only really two transitions that would make sense to be observed, and that would be the transition from the 2T2G to the 2-1G, and then also from the 2T2G to the 2T2G right here. But the ratio between these two um, energies of these, of these transitions is much closer and too close to be a 1 to, to 2, essentially, uh, ratio. And so in the high spin case, we would expect to see two transitions uh, very close in energy to one another. Whereas in the case of the low spin, sorry, of the high spin case that we have right here, we're seeing two transitions that have a pretty appreciable energy difference between them. So we can expect to see a, uh, at some point in here, a ratio of 1.95 between these two energies. And so the next step, once we've determined which one of these sides we're going to focus on, we know it's going to be the high spin case, is to pull out a ruler. And so to do that, I have a ruler right here. And we'll just line it up. And we'll look for a point where the, the ratio, or at least the, the, the length from, from the bottom to that uh, first slope, is going to be about half. Uh, a little bit uh, less than half of the uh, slope to the top one. So if we start going and we start looking, so if we just stop at this point right here, right, we can see that from the 4T1G to the 4T2G, uh, that right there is about a difference of one centimeter on this ruler, but from the 4T1G up to the uh, 4T1G originating from the 4P, we can see that that's about at 4.5 centimeters. So that's a difference of 4 point, or a ratio of 4.5. So much too high of a ratio for the transitions that we, we have right here, for the energies that we have. So if we continue to move to the left and keep moving, and let's see what happens when we stop at uh, delta over B value of 10. In that case, if we look at our transitions, what we can see is that the energy in this case is about at 2.2 centimeters and in the case of the other one it's at about 5.9 centimeters. So we're slowly getting there. We're at about a 2.5 ratio and so if we keep moving further to the right and move and move and move what we'll see is at about a delta O over B of 15 we'll have a value of Three point, or a distance of 3.5 centimeters to the uh, first transition and to the next one it'll be at about 6.8 and so that's very close to being a 1.95 ratio between the two of them and so what we can we can now uh, say uh, with pretty good certainty is that the delta over B value for our um, species that we're looking at right here is uh, 15. And so if that's the case, what we can then do is we can now uh, look at and determine what the value of B is. And so to do that, what we'll have to get is the E over B values for the two different transitions. And so for this first one, um, it's just going to be equal to 15. So E1 over B is going to equal 15. And in the case of the Second transition, what we'll have is an E2 over B is going to be equal to about 27, right? Which is pretty close to what we have right here. Uh, um, you know, very simply, we could have, you know, mathematically just simply determined that right there. Now, another trick that you can do if you don't bring a ruler to class is you can kind of assume 
um, that these slopes right here are perfect values of one. So you have uh, an m value of one. And then you can just simply use the ratio and be able to, to calculate um, what the value of delta O over B should be. And so to do that, I'm going to show that to you real, qu real quick. And so I'm just going to remove uh, the tanabe Suganu diagram and the ruler real quick. The way that we can determine it, you know, using a uh, very simple uh, uh, math would be to state that the slope of this first transition right here is going to be y1 is equal to mx plus b, and so the value of m will be 1, b is going to be 0 since we're going to be starting right there, so y1 is just going to be directly equal to x. In the case of y2, it sh we'll say that it has a slope of 1 again as well, and so this will just be x plus, and so if we look at the origin, it looks to be at about 15. And so if we say that it's at 15, what we can then do is, um, we can now use this ratio right here, where y2 over y1 is going to equal the ratio we have right there, so that it'll be equal to 1.95, and we can then now set um, these two different slopes uh, into this equation, so we'll have x plus 15 over x, and so if we rearrange everything, we'll have 1.95 equal to 1 plus 15 over x, and so further rearrangement, we'll get 15 over x is equal to 0 0.95, <clears throat> and so then x will equal 15 divided by 0 0.95 which gives us a value of 15.8. So fairly close to the value that we had determined using the ruler. There'll be some variation there. You're going to have a slightly different value in this case um, from, from what we had determined over here, but um, it's, it's a pretty good approximation in, for, for the purposes of what we're using right here. And so we'll continue on and we'll use the values that, um, that I determined using the ruler. And so now what we'll do is we will determine what the value of B is. And so since we know what the energy of uh, E1 is, which is 11,300, we can rearrange this equation so that B is going to be equal to 11,300 wave numbers over 15. And so that value in this case right here is going to be 753 wave numbers. For the other value for, for E2, we'll do that same um, math. What we'll get is 22,000 wave numbers over 27. And so the value in this case is going to be 814 wave numbers. And so looking at this right here, what we can now do is get the B average. And so B average in this case will equal 784 is the value that I got in this case. So 784 uh, wave numbers is what we'll have then as our B average. And so now we can take that and plug that into this equation right here and determine the value of delta O. And so delta O will be equal to 15B, which if we then replace B with 784, will give us a value of 11,760 wave numbers. And so using this tanabe sagano diagram, we were able to determine the uh, spin state of the system that we're looking at. It's going to be a high spin D7 species. We know what the octahedral splitting energy is going to be, which is 11,760 wave numbers, and we also have the value of the rocka parameter, which is 784 wave numbers.